Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Nancy, and some people have told me their favorite part about these um, online worship is Buddy. So I just wanted to let Buddy say hi to you. Buddy, can you tell everybody hi? Okay, very good. Thanks. Good morning. You just saw um, Buddy the dog. And uh, I'm filming this morning for Sunday, August 2nd. And I always want to start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you. When we have church online, I know that there's always um, temptations to do other things. And um, so you're on the device right now. And I pray that this is meaningful for you and that the Holy Spirit uh, takes these words from a um, clay vessel with holes in it, cracks, but the God's light shines through to you today. That's, that's my prayer. And, and I like to emphasize that you and I, you, we are the body of Christ and that hasn't changed on our church voicemail. I think we're going to change our message right now. It says that the church is closed, but we want to say that the body of Christ is open uh, to be vessels of God's love. So thanks for, for uh, worshiping online. A few announcements. Tremendous thanks to Vicki Jardine Tobin. Vicki is the daughter of Bucky and Faye Jardine. Vicki is up visiting and also doing online teaching for Centralia College in Olympia, Washington. Last week, Vicki played the piano and her daughter, Danielle, sang Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen. That was for Sunday, July 26th. Uh, and they're singing for us today also. What a pleasure. All the music has been and a, a treat and gift, a gift that uh, Vicki and Danielle are giving us. Loved ones recovering from COVID. Jane from Mina, as I mentioned last week, is home from the hospital and recovering. Mark Ricker, formerly from Ashland, is still in the hospital, but he is off the ventilator and Tuesday of this week was day 13 on the vent. And his daughter writes, um, getting the phone call that dad is, was taken off the vent filled us with great joy. Thank, she thanks everyone for praying for Mark Ricker's recovery. He has COVID and um, she said, dad's not completely out of the woods. His heart, his lungs, his body in general, everything is completely worn out from fighting against the virus for the past two weeks. We're so proud of him for fighting and not giving up. So keep marking your prayers. Also, please pray, um, two people at Messiah, pray for Jack Peterson and his family. Jack uh, is in Northern Lights and being um, in the nursing home is especially difficult now um, because of COVID. And Barb Swenson, a member of Messiah, took a fall and I talked with her today and she said, yes, please uh, pray for my healing when we fall. There's usually bruises and lots of pain. She has a broken toe, so keep her in prayer. After worship on Sunday, August 2nd, I'll be having two weeks of vacation. Pastor Neil Milam is available for emergency, uh, pastoral emergencies. His number is 715-813-9046. And a synodically authorized minister, Mary Murado, is available. Mary's in Bayfield, and her number is 715-209-0900 in case of pastoral emergency. We'll have Holy Communion today, so pause your device and get bread or something bread-like and wine or juice. T title of today's message, Take What You Have and Do Something You Can Do. I'll say that again. Take what you have. And, and do something that you really can do. And our scriptures today are uh, Isaiah 55 and Matthew 14. And Reverend Tom Schumann writes liturgies that are um, very contemporary. And he's taking these words, the liturgy and the um, call for reconciliation in modern language, based on the ancient texts of Isaiah 55. And Matthew 14, which is the feeding of the 5,000 Bible story. 
all who are thirsty come god is the fountain for our lives all who are hungry come jesus feeds us with goodness and grace rich and poor young and old neighbor and guest come the holy spirit gathers everyone around the table and now our prayer of the day again in sort of modern language but imagine especially in this time of social distancing and physical distancing here's our prayer pray with me dear god at times we might try to distance ourselves from you and even then you spread a picnic of grace waving us over with a big grin on your face oh god your compassion is spread over our brokenness like jam over toast. When we get in a sweat over whether or not we can meet all of our self-imposed expectations, oh God, you wipe our faces, give us a cup of cool water and whisper, relax. I have taken all of that off your shoulders. Oh God, we rejoice in your gifts, which are ours, and we cannot thank you enough, amen. And a call to reconciliation, again, ancient words from scripture. Um, God is not mean-spirited or vengeful. God is gracious and merciful, always willing to listen to our prayers and to heal our hearts. Join me in a prayer for forgiveness. Dear God, we don't have enough to end all hunger. But forgive us when we forget that very little can do so much with your presence and your power. Let us listen and come to the one who covers us with compassion, who feeds us with, on grace and mercy. We are so grateful this day, O oh God, that you have forgiven us. Sometimes we pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us without realizing what we are saying. Today, now, Help us offer your grace and forgiveness to everyone we meet because of how you have forgiven us. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And the Bible story, the feeding of the 5,000, and I will be reading this today from the um, message translation. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 14. Jesus just received news that his good friend, John the Baptist, has been killed. When Jesus got the news, Jesus slipped away by boat to an out-of-the-way place by himself to grieve. But unsuccessfully, someone saw Jesus and the word got around. Soon a lot of people from nearby villages walked around the lake to where he was. When he saw them coming, he did not avoid them. Jesus was overcome with pity and healed their sick. Toward evening, the disciples approached Jesus. We're out in the country and it's getting late. Dismiss the people so they can go to the villages and get some supper. But Jesus said, there is no need to dismiss them. You give them supper. You do it. You give them something to eat. They said, all we have are five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus then said, bring them here. Then he had the people sit on the grass. Jesus took the loaves and fish, lifted his face to heaven in prayer, blessed, broke, and gave the bread to his disciples. The disciples then gave the food to this large group. They all ate their fill. They gathered 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 were fed, plus women and children. The gospel of the Lord. What a story. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, the feeding of the 5,000 is a story that amazes us. Tell us something new today about how you see the world and what you want us to do. In your name we pray and say amen together. Amen. Our prayer is, God, tell us something new about how you see the world and what you want us to do. There's a Jewish term called midrash. And Jewish Bible scholars or Torah scholars 
read a passage of scripture, and then come up with as many possible meanings as they can. Could mean this, it could mean that, it could mean this, it could mean that. Religious scholars play with scripture and they have midrash. That's an attitude about scripture that I find thrilling, and it comes from the Jewish faith. Compare that attitude with, um, there's only one right way to interpret this story, and it's my way. Therefore, your way is wrong. So on this one, oh, we could have some dandy arguments. Did Jesus really turn the bread and the fish did, it, did, did that meager amount really feed 5,000 plus women and children? Do you really want to spend your time in life arguing about this Bible story? Do we take it literally, literally or not? Do you want to go, I know you don't, say no more. You don't want to argue about that. So I would love us to embrace our Jewish brothers and sisters idea that this word of God is living and alive and the spirit is alive. That story could mean a bunch of things. So I'm going to say one idea that um, is not new. You've heard it yourself. Take what you have and do something you can do. Five loaves of bread, two fish. Take what you have and do something you can do. Oh, it's a very exciting uh, concept. And a couple stories to illustrate that. My first story I have permission to tell is from um, the UU pastor, Stacy Craig. And if this story sounds familiar, it was in the Ashland Daily Press. She, this was her article. And Stacy talks about being a 19 year old college freshman at Northland and she was on an exchange, environmental exchange program in Jamaica. A young 19 year old, she had a place to live by herself and her task was to create an environmentally focused vacation Bible school in Jamaica. Wow, Stacy, that's cool already. So she tells the story that in her little, you know, place where she's living was, uh, she was given food limes and mango and a key fruit and some other fruit that she'd never heard of and a slice wedge of pumpkin and people in the village or wherever she was there in Jamaica started looking at her saying Stacy what's wrong you are losing weight and she had to confess that I don't know how to deal with this food I don't know how to prepare it and I am losing weight a Jamaican woman said oh or I don't know who said it first but Stacy got to go to someone's house and learn how to prepare those foods. And she talks about the first night, it was a sacred meal. Food was prepared and it was so tasty and Stacy couldn't stop eating, got very full, but even more than the food, it was the fellowship and the laughter. And that concept of eating together is sacred. It's holy, it's life-giving, stayed with her so much so that she had ears to hear when someone interpreted the gospel text in a way that really made sense to her. Take what you have. In one minute of that story, there's extreme scarcity. Lord, we don't have enough to feed them. Let's send them to town. Some jokingly say, send them to town so they can go to McDonald's. And then Jesus says, no, you feed them. Right before the miracle, there was huge fear and scarcity. We can't feed this many people. And then one way to interpret this story is what if everybody really looked in their backpack, in their bag? What if everyone participated in feeding? And, and then all of a sudden, what if there could be a feast? Because oh, we didn't realize everyone has something. Take what you have and do what you can with it. So what if this story um, is about each person together can make this big difference. Take what you have and do something with it. Another story about food and giving is um, from Noreen at Coco's Bakery in Washburn. 
And I so much thank my uh, pastor friend, Mary Murado. We were talking and Mary said, Nancy, I think I heard Coco's is giving a lot of food away. Is that true? And I was really lucky enough to get to talk with Noreen. And um, she explained, she even had time to tell me the background. Noreen's probably in her 50s now, but she said, Nancy, when I was in my 20s, I'd watch the news, the international news and, and uh, throw up my hands and say, oh, there's a lot of bad stuff, but what can I do about it? And something shifted in her that um, I maybe can't change things in um, Vietnam or Israel or Palestine, but what about my little corner of the world? And this attitude has really stayed with her. I can do something today in my corner of the world. And, and um, Noreen is uh, known for generosity in, um, in giving to causes. And she heard that um, through Facebook that the um, Bayfield-based uh, core group has been really looking for people who need food and they're giving 50 food, families food every week. And Noreen said, oh, I would love to help. That's such a great idea. And then Noreen said, but I can't do it on my own. So I met with my bakers and said, can we do something? So Noreen said, please credit my bakers. They usually would work eight hour days. Now they're working nine to 10 hour days because we are giving a hundred loaves of bread every week. And so each family gets two fresh loaves of bread and I couldn't do it on my own, but my baker said, yeah, let's, let's commit. Take what you have and do something. And uh, they decided we have the ability to bake bread. And um, after uh, several months of not being open, Coco's is not rolling in the dough, but they, oh, no pun intended. <laughs> but Noreen just said, this is something that, that I'm so proud of, the staff, my crew. But they said, yes, let's do it. Take what you have and do something you can do. Let's look at hunger in Wisconsin. And um, I have to read this from a 2018 United Way of Wisconsin study before the pandemic results um, came through that one third of Wisconsin households struggle to pay for basic needs. One in three Wisconsin families in 2018 were struggling to pay for basic needs. Of course, it's much worse now. How do you hear that statistic? How do I hear it? One way we can hear it is that's too big. That's too big of a problem. That's like feeding more than 5,000. And maybe I will be like the disciples and say, send them to town, send them to McDonald's. And then if I am listening to the scriptures, Jesus says, no, you do it. What is in your backpack? What's in your purse? What is in your supply? Here are a few ways we could do something. Then I love to start with other people. Cocos, they're just committing to 100 loaves of bread a week and more, they give more than that away. Um, one idea that has been started uh, with Lois the Lamb and a friend of mine, Wendy Leibert, is keeping in mind your groceries, this, or not your groceries, your, your produce, your garden, keeping your garden in mind, and you're starting to now see all your cucumbers and zucchinis, find ways that you can give them away. And I think, um, I need to clarify this, sometimes the brick will take it and and if you're listening, let's let's brainstorm together. Is there a way that we can have a table of uh, free produce? It would not be on Wednesdays because we support all the great farmers who have the farmer's market for pay, but maybe there's another way. Um, and I have a really fascinating idea that I have not tried on how we can um, look at hunger and grow. And tell me this, between now and uh, the first Tuesday in November, are there forces in the United States that would delight in dividing us? Are there forces in the United States that would delight in dividing us? Yes, there is. there are forces that just are thrilled for us to fight and fight and political parties just fight, 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 fight. And I want to say that real clearly because who really wants it? Who really wants it? So this is a hunch. No, 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 it's not a hunch. It's the truth. I'd, I'd bet my life on it. People in both political parties, and I'm saying both because we have two major parties in the United States. Jesus followers 
in both political parties. There are, there are Jesus followers in both political parties that ache for the fact that one in three families are hungry. I know that for a total fact. I know it. And you know it too. Depend, regardless of political party, there are Jesus followers on both sides that ache to hear that one in three families don't have enough to pay for basic needs. What if, what if you and, and um, what if me, I, what if we learned about the opposite party that you identify with and say, how do you handle hunger in your party? Because hunger is a Jesus issue. It's not political. Jesus says, feed the poor, take care of the hungry. How many times? So it's a Jesus issue and political attitudes toward how to feed the hunger differ. Of course they do. They differ. But would you be willing to learn all you can about how the other side likes to feed the poor and be open and curious and then in conflict management uh, classes to really learn to love one another who have different views. Learn so much about the other view on how to feed the hungry that you could argue and act like you're on that side. I think we can be unified, even though we have different political um, philosophies. Amen. Because we have Jesus who's higher than the politics that has all this unifying stuff. Be one. You're going to be different, but be one. Feed the naked. Visit people in prison. That's not political, right? Love your neighbor. So that's how we can feed the hungry is learn about how it's done in the government. And then how you and I can do it. What's in my backpack? Take what we have and do something we can do. This message is, is um, heard differently when I share it at Northern Lights and the Oaks. And um, this week uh, I get to share it. I've already shared it at Northern Lights and today the Oaks. And I will say to them, you all have probably fed a lot of people in your lifetime and now you're, you're in the nursing home and you, you don't have the capability to, to put on a big spread. But let's take that idea. Take what you have and do something you can do. And until the day we die, like Mark Ricker in the hospital, he's loving the nurses right now and joking with them. Mark, I wish you could just be here because he is taking what he has and doing what he can do. And he's, he's, he's joking with the hospital staff. And I know he's praising God that he's alive. And people at Northern Lights and the Oaks can smile, which means so much. And they, oh, the things they are doing and can do are still great. Those in the parking lot, those of you in your living room, take what you have and do something you can do. And I'm, I'm honored and um, happy. I'm going to cry. Shoot, why does that happen? To read to you what you as a Jesus follower can do now when we have communion. We can receive. We can receive. Christ comes to us in, with, and under the bread and wine to nourish our faith. We share in a sacred meal that spans all time and space. We commune with the saints who have gone before us and with other Christians around the globe who gather at our Lord's table. The uncontainable, I like that word, uncontainable, uncontainable presence, grace, love, forgiveness, and mercy of Christ come to us in simple bread and wine. <laughs> The word uncontainable, what does that mean? I think it means we can't contain Jesus in, um, in a building of a church. So now we have communion virtually and Jesus is still with us. Uncontainable presence, grace, love, forgiveness, and mercy of Christ come to us in simple bread and wine. Take what you have and do something you can do. And right now I'm going to ask you to receive the body and blood of Christ and be strengthened by Jesus. Then go to love and serve the Lord. Think back to the story of the loaves and fishes. The disciples are so great because they're like us. Jesus, send them to town. We can't do it. And Jesus listens and says, well, no, you can. You do it. You feed them. 
And I'm going to add to Jesus' words, you do it. And now these are words to us. Whatever it is that you choose to do, do it with Christ in, under, and through you. Christ is in you, under you, and through you. Isn't that good news? Amen.
We'll continue our worship with words of the hymn, Break Now the Bread of Life. Break now the bread of life, dear Lord, to me, as once you broke the loaves beside the sea. Beyond the sacred page, I seek you, Lord. My spirit waits for you, O living word. You are the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. Your holy word, the truth that rescues me. Give me to eat and live within your love. Teach me to love your truth, for you are love. And this third verse is about the Holy Spirit. And um, I changed one word. I changed one word in verse three. And you'll notice which word it is. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are beyond gender. So sometimes we call God he, you could call God she, you could call God God could call all of all of that. But verse three, I offer to you, oh, send your spirit, Lord, now onto me, that she may touch my eyes and make me see. Show us the truth concealed within your word and in your book revealed, we see your will. The hymn, Break Now the Bread of Life. And our prayers, please join me in prayer. Oh God, you take resources that appear to be meager. You bless them and there is plenty. May we trust that what you bless and ask us to share with others is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. God, help us hear the anguish of those who cry to you in suffering. Show us how we can help the hungry in our community and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind, especially Jane, Mark, Jack, Jack, and Barb, and others we name before you now. Actually, there's two Barbs, also Barb Olson. Or they're both healing from falls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You freely offer your amazing grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Give us such welcoming hearts that our words and actions may extend your love to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Take time to think of all your loved ones who have passed away. I'll give us a moment of silence. All the loved ones. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ensure hope that nothing can ever separate us from your love. We offer these prayers to you through Jesus and say amen together. Amen. May God's peace be with you all. If you're by yourself, um, I'm giving you peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. And I'm receiving the peace from you. Thank you. And if you have someone else under the roof, pause your device and realize how blessed you are. And if you too have been um, fighting this week, I mean, you know, under roofs, do you ever, maybe not, maybe not, but a couple of you take the time to say, I forgive you, do you forgive me? Peace be with you. <sighs> we'll continue now with the words of institution. And we have bread, of course. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this in the remembrance of me. Our Lord gives us a meal and a prayer. Let us together pray the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we'll have communion, the body of Christ given for you, Christ's body given for you, and Christ's body given for me. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And the blood of Christ shed for me. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you so that you can go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And this week, take what you have and do something you can do. Amen. <laughs>